Hey, I'm Hunter from SkillThrive, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use styled components to create a flexible design system in your React app. Now, several months back, I showed you how you can create flexible components using nothing but React and JavaScript. But in this video, I'm gonna be using a CSS and JS library called Styled Components. Now, in previous videos, I've used a CSS and JS library called Emotion, and both of these packages do similar things. Now, if you've never heard of CSS and JS, the idea is exactly how it sounds. It is writing CSS, but using JavaScript. Now, you might ask, why do you want to do this? And I'm not going to go deep into the pros and cons. There's a lot of people who don't buy into it and just rather write class names, but I'm a huge fan. And one of the reasons I'm a huge fan is that all your styles are scoped within that component. So you don't have to worry about any class name interfering with any other component. It's all within that component. So if something is off in that component, you know you can go directly to it in order to fix the CSS. Now, another reason I love CSS and JS libraries is that it handles all the class names for you. So if you go to skillthrive.com, you look at the code here, you can see this class name is this random, randomly generated class name. Now I'm actually using a motion on my site, but styled components do a very similar thing. So this is awesome if you don't have to, if you don't wanna worry about class names, cause you know how hard it can be uh, naming it, even if you stick to a naming convention like BIM. So uh, you be the judge if you want to use something like uh, styled components. But in this video, that's what we're gonna be using. All right, so to get started, we're actually going to use code sandbox because then we don't have to worry about setting our local, local environment. We can just jump here in our browser and create um, a Gatsby site all within the browser. So what we wanna do, once you sign up for uh, code sandbox, is come in and click on create sandbox. Now you could come up here and search for what you wanted. Now you might not see it, but I actually, actually already have this template um, here. But if you don't see it, what you can do is come into import project, then import from GitHub, and the link that we're using is here, or the project that we're using is on this GitHub link. And I'll be sure to link that in the description and in the course files. So you just wanna copy that and click here and then import it. Now I already did that. So I'm gonna to come to create sandbox and click here on hello world. It's going to open up the template. Now, if you're using this and importing this from GitHub, you'll have to come in and say uh, fork and then fork it to your actual code sandbox. And then you can come up here and name it something, whatever you want. Now, uh, what I need to do is let this go ahead and build. So I'm gonna jump uh, forward in the video so we don't have to watch this build in uh, real time. And then I'll come back once this is finished. All right, so it looks like the uh, Gatsby site is done um, building here in the code sandbox. And you can see all this is doing is just getting us the bare bones and then printing out hello world um, on our index page or our, our home page. And the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and add some dependencies here in code sandbox. Now, if you're doing this on your local machine, more than likely you would be using uh, you know, your terminal and using NPM in order to install your packages. But in order to do this in code sandbox, all you have to do is come down to add dependency and then type in the dependency. So this one's gonna be styled components. So this one here, go ahead and click that. That's gonna go ahead and add that to our project. And another one we want is styled components and then Gatsby. And then we want the Gatsby plugin styled components. So this one right here. Now, once these are um, you know, installed onto our project, we should be able to come into our package.json file and see them in our uh, dependencies. So right now you can see those right here, styled components and the Gatsby plugin styled components. Now, one thing we need to do um, on a Gatsby site is do some stuff here in our config. So let's go ahead and head into our Gatsby config and we need to um, set some stuff here in our config. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of the comments here. And the way I'm getting this is right from the documentation. So you can see here, this is how you use it. Edit Gatsby config, add this to it. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it in here. And we also have the ability to add options, but I'm not going to do that for now. So let's go ahead and get rid of that and then just save this file. All right, so that's everything for getting styled components ready to go on our, uh, our uh, React app here. So let's go ahead and just exit out of this and let's come into the source here and I want to add a new folder. 
Now this folder could be anything you want, but I like to put my styled components in an elements folder and then keep my traditional React components in the components folder. Now you don't have to do this. This is just the way that I like to, to organize my project. Now the next thing I'm gonna do in this elements folder is create a new file called index.js and another one called typography elements.js. And what I wanna do in the index is then export everything from the uh, typography one that we just created. And what this allows us to do is when we want to use this in another, uh, somewhere else in our project, instead of having to import it from this typography elements directly, we can just import it from this index, so the same file, um, and we don't have to worry about, um, you know, remembering what file it's in and we import all of our style elements from this index page. So let's go ahead and save that. And we're done here for this index.js file. And let's come over and open our uh, typography elements here. And this is where we're going to be creating the styled component. Now you could create as many style components you want here. And that's exactly if I was doing this entire project, this is what I would do. I put all my font related uh, style components in this, um, this uh, file. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and import styled components from the library. So to do that, we write import styled from styled components. And the way we create a style component is really simple. First, we say what we want to call it. So export const, and we need to export it because we want it to be available on other files. So we're gonna call this styled text equals. So then we write styled, which we just imported from styled components. And then we say what we want the HTML element to be. So in this case, we want it to be a paragraph tag. Then we do two back ticks. And then right in here, we can write just our standard CSS with some extra features because this is a CSS and JS library. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to use the font family here. So we're gonna be using Mully and then uh, the fallback, whoops, of sans serif. Now that reminds me, in order to use the Google font, we need to go ahead and make sure we import it. So to do that, I'm gonna come down to add dependencies and do Gatsby Google uh, font. So Gatsby plugin Google font. Then I need to go back into my config and make sure I'm using and importing that Google font. All right, so now that we have that, we're able to use this font in our project. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. All right, so now that we have the font family ready to go, we need to go ahead and do the next thing here, which is our font size. So we're gonna do font size, and we could just set the font size like we would typically do in CSS, but now we're gonna be using something called props, passing those props down into our styled component and then using them here uh, in the, the uh, where we actually declare the styled component. So the way we do that is first writing props. So this is gonna be an arrow function. And what I'm gonna be using is a switch statement, which is one of my favorite things in JavaScript. And the way we want to do this is first writing switch, and the property we want to look at is the props.size. So we're gonna be passing in another uh, prop here called size, and then setting the font size based off to whatever that value is. So here's where we can write the cases for um, what we would pass in. So the first case we're gonna do is case medium. And if this is set to medium, we want to return a string with the following font size, so 1.125 rem. Okay, then we wanna do another case where the case is small, and in this instance, we want to return another string with a size of one rem. And then we have another case, extra small, Again, returning an even smaller value here. And then we have one more, which is extra, extra small. And here we're going to return another value, 0 0.75 rem. 
And on a, uh, a switch statement, you also need to declare a default value. And the reason you do this is, let's say for instance, you pass in a prop and then none of them matched any of these, you need to tell the switch statement what to use as a backup. So that's exactly what the default does. So default, we're going to return uh, a string here and we're just gonna use the medium value. All right, so now that we have that done, we need to go ahead and do move on to our next property, which is font weight. So font weight, and we're gonna use props here as well. So again, we're just gonna pass in props and then use a switch statement, so switch. And then this time we're gonna be looking at a prop called weight. And depending on what that value is, we can set different values. So case one is going to be normal. So if we pass in normal, we want to set a return value of 400. Then we want case of bold, where we return a value of uh, 700. And just like before, we need a, de a default case. So default is going to return 400. Now, make sure whatever you use here, you're actually importing that from Google. Because uh, what we did um, for our Google font is we just imported these two, so those are going to be available for us. So make sure you have that before you set fonts here and wondering why you know, the thin or extra bold isn't pulling in. All right, so the next thing we want to move to is the line height. So again, I'm gonna come down here and, excuse me, set line height. where we then pass in props once again, and we use our switch statement to see what that value is. Now this one's going to be very similar to um, the font size where we look at the prop of size. So what we can do to save some time is to just go ahead and copy this, paste it here, and what we want to do is we want to change the line height value. So this one we're going to change here. For small, we want to do this one. And I'll go ahead and just do the rest as well. All right, so the next one we want to do is define the text decoration. So text decoration. Again, we're going to be using props. writing a switch statement. And here we're gonna look at a prop that we're gonna pass in called decoration. And the first case is gonna be underline. And if this is passed in, what we wanna do is we want to return a value of underline. So just in case it wasn't clear, um, I like to use the, the case and the return value to be very similar so it's easy to remember. Now this case right here, whatever prop I'm passing in, I can name this whatever I want. But whatever I'm returning has to be legitimate CSS, right? Because what we're doing is we're set, setting text decoration to the value of underline. So this has to be legitimate, but this case value, the prop name can be whatever it wants. So I just wanted to make sure that's very clear before we continue to move on. All right, and the next one is going to be a case of line through. And here we're going to return the line through value. And remember, we need a default. So default is going to be none. All right, so we have one more here that I just want to pass in. And that's going to be the color. And again, we're going to use props. So we can pass in the props.color, and if that doesn't exist, or we can just use a random color here. So that's everything for defining our uh, style text um, component. Now let's jump into our, our index page and actually use that um, in the code. So let's go into our index.js page and I'm just going to go ahead and write this a little different. So let's do const index page and we need to go ahead and export this. So export default index page. 
then we need to write our return here. So return. And here's where we can go ahead and uh, declare the styled component. So styled, or excuse me, styled text. And we can write here, hello world. So it's going to save that. And if we refresh, you can see now we get the font in and we get all those default values. Now we're getting defaults because we didn't pass any props. So let's go ahead and make sure we pass in some props to show you how flexible this component can be. The first prop I'm going to pass in is a size prop of small. So let's go ahead and save that. You can see how that changed. Then what we can do is a weight equal to bold. Then let's go ahead and set a decoration to line through. And let's go ahead and set a color value as well. So color equals HSL 207. 70% and 59%. So now you can see by passing in all these different properties, we're able to change the size, change the line height, change the weight, decoration, and the color. So this might seem a little complicated if you've never seen a CSS and JS library, but just kind of think about what we just did. We created one component in order to handle all the different varieties for a styled text um, design in our project. So just to show you exactly what we did is I'm gonna come into a Figma file here, which I used to design this project. You can see this area right here is the styled text. So these are all the different values that I just created, not even taking in consideration of the different color values. And I did this just using one component. So hopefully that gives you a really good idea of how something like style components or emotion, a CSS and JS library can really um, allow you to build a lot of flexibility into your React app without having to write a ton of different classes and managing all of that at the same time. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and be sure to check out our other design and dev courses on our YouTube channel and on skillthrive.com. Again, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive and I'll see you in the next video.